100 subscribers. I thought I'd start this video uh, talking a little bit about this before we go into the topic. 100 subscribers. Thank you very much for the support. I hope this channel uh, gains more subscribers. My aim is to get to a few thousand at least <clears throat> in order to be effective in my delivery of Dharma and sharing what I know about practice. And uh, as I'm happy to do videos as long as people are happy to watch it and support it. Uh, if I find that they're not supported and, and the videos aren't being watched, then we'll move on to other areas. I uh, also don't want to forget to remind you, don't forget to uh, subscribe and become a member at uh, Buddhist.cafe. Uh, We're trying to, trying to create an a online community and this online community, let it be the seed of good things in our physical communities uh, to try to bring a Buddhist, you know, a, a worldly Buddhist community together um, to do good things for Buddhism uh, in, in all areas, whether it be uh, building a temple, whether it be promoting the temple that you go to or letting people know about the temple or, or, or I, I guess, you know, the type of temple it is, uh, if you've got projects going on in your temple or things like this, uh, letting us know, letting the community know I think this is important. I think Buddhist Cafe is an attempt at this at least. Now, if it's successful or not, well, that depends on you. It depends on how many subscribers we get. To make anything really successful these days, uh, especially online, we, you need thousands of, thousands of members, thousands of followers. Otherwise, nothing much gets done. I just want to reiterate that uh, Buddhist.cafe is not about me, it's not about Bhante, it's about giving any Buddhist a voice, uh, helping any temple anywhere in the world, uh, creating prosperity for our communities everywhere. Which brings me into uh, the topic of today. So diligence and prosperity. To have prosperity, right, like I was staying at this monastery just before I changed monasteries just recently. And I'll give you an update on that later. But I was staying at a, like in a private uh, kind of land situation for about a year now. And uh, I left a, a week or two ago. And uh, I noticed there a few things that were really important. Um, and uh, there were some rice fields there. And I noticed how hard the farmers work in the rice field. And then I saw like after a period of six, seven months, uh, the rice growing and uh, uh, getting taller and, and greener and, and things like this, and uh, then cultivating it and then uh, putting the rice into bags and bringing it out to the community to feed people. Now, without this kind of diligence, uh, people won't eat in this case, right? I'm not saying they won't eat, but I'm just using it as a metaphor in this example, right? The fact is that diligence, that hard diligence, that, 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 that effort and that diligence, those few farmers put in into those crops, leads to prosperity for a lot of people. It puts rice in the, in the mouths of a lot of people, it feeds a lot of people, right? And I think that uh, diligence is definitely one virtue that if you're a lay person and you want to uh, have things in life and want to get to a better tomorrow, you want to have a prosperous life, well, diligence is definitely an ingredient you need to add to your menu every day, all the time. Try to be diligent in everything you do, uh, not to be lazy, not to, not to try to cut corners. Really go, th go 100% in everything you do with absolute diligence, with complete diligence in everything you do. No matter how small the project is or how large the project is, you know, do it well. Uh, be thorough and consistent with it, which are, are two other ingredients which I talk about quite a lot. Uh, there's a... Uh, 
discourse in the in the um, gradual yeah in the gradual discourse of the samyutta i think that's the right interpretation translation but anyway there's where buddha talks about certain things just certain qualities and one is uh diligence is definitely in there but there's another one called thorough and consistent right thorough and consistent so diligence and being thorough and consistent and consistent i guess they all work together now whatever you do whatever project you do whether you write a letter or whether you clean your house or whether you uh wrap a present a gift or you, whatever you do try to be diligent in everything you do and also when you're talking with people communicating with people in your workplace everything you do be diligent in terms of the world right and that will lead to prosperity for yourself and others around you as well it also leads to trust where people trust you more because they see that you're really earnest and sincere in everything you're doing you're diligent so that's really helpful in uh, your local community wherever you are but more importantly being diligent in practice now this is where we start to walk away from the worldly stuff we start to work in walk into our mind we start to walk into the the the, the noble eightfold path right now diligence is utmost here because it's so easy to get distracted it's so easy to lose yourself in the current and stream of the world in all things for hours and hours every day and forget that there is that death is on a horizon right death that uh it doesn't end here that impermanence is in effect impermanence is in effect right and not self right and that we are living in a state of dukkha right we are living in a state of dukkha so the diligence right the depth of diligence here is not just being diligent to uh, achieve prosperity materially or achieve prosperity uh, on, 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 on the level of community where where the community is growing there's opportunities <clears throat> everything's flourishing people are flourishing but also you want your practice to be flourishing you want to be prosperous in your practice you want to elevate yourself you know give yourself every opportunity to prosper in your practice and diligence is definitely uh, an ingredient that needs to be developed uh, cultivated and ingrained in the mind right because without this without this thing called diligence now there's many other qualities patient perseverance being thorough and consistent conviction confidence I've talked about a lot of these uh, qualities already, right? But diligence is definitely something the Buddha, <coughs> if you have read, studied the suttas, the word diligent comes up quite a lot. In this tradition, um, the, the teachers, the senior teachers talk about uh, Kwan Pian, which is Thai for diligence, right? As an absolute necessity in everything we do. But even more so in practice, right? Because it's diligence that keeps you constantly at it. It's diligence that gives you that no die, no die, no surrender attitude that we need in this practice. And remember the impermanence of it all. Remember this death, uh, this death thing, right? Remember this life and this death, right? There's this life, but there's this death as well, right? They both should be in the same sentence at all times when we talk about life we need to talk about what the future is of life the future is of life is death it's not retirement right so in buddhism we know very well uh what the buddha talks about it doesn't end here right so diligence is like an investment strategy <clears throat> in yourself in your own prosperity not just for this life and not just for the material things in this life and the communi communitarian things um, in this life, but also for prosperity and and for and for uh, uh, flourishing beyond, right? And maybe if we're lucky, we can get we can experience the fruit of path of one of them at least, right? Or fall into the stream 
etc etc stream entry at least right uh, but with strong diligence with with uh, applied diligence in everything we do right this for sure if you develop this and you develop a lot of strengths of diligence your, your diligence becomes very strong you'll find that in every corner of your life right in any corner of your life it will lead to something lead to something good it will flourish even small things right and that's important because you see um, dukkha is the unsatisfactory dukkha is not bliss right in buddhism we we want bliss we seek bliss we seek freedom we seek betterness we seek the better things we seek ecstasy we seek and i'm not talking about drugs i'm talking about in mind right even so you know some buddhists talk about well it's not some but like, i guess a lot of people talk about jhanas well jhanas are states of mind which are excellent they're excellent states of mind according to the to to the buddha in in the in, in according to the canon in discourses the buddha praises jhana praises jhana but praises the bliss the bliss of nibbana see we are pleasure seekers in a way buddhists where we're trying to seek the better things all the time <clears throat> we're seeking greener pastures pretty much all the time but it's not out there it's right it's in it's in here it's it's it's, it's in us and this is why though see discipline discipline <clears throat> and diligence creates the prosperity and this is where the link gets missed a lot because uh, in general people like to tend to tend to like to uh, eat the cake but not cook the cake or make the cake uh, get the ingredients and go through the people just want want to buy it and just get that gratification that instant gratification discipline and diligence <clears throat> Discipline and diligence is what gives you that prosperity, is what takes you to bliss, that, that diligence to stay on uh, <clears throat> the cultivation and development of factors, right? So this is really important because it's very difficult to do anything if you just don't get out of bed in the morning, if, you don't, if you're lazy with yourself. It's hard to be prosperous. It's hard to be prosperous in, in normal life. It's definitely difficult to be prosperous in the Buddhist life, in the Buddhist goal, right? Which is that third noble truth that uh, all this, everything I'm doing, everything that, that what a temple does, all of the fuss, all of the everything is centered around that one focus. That's liberation, unbinding, enlightenment, cooling off, cessation of dukkha. That's what we're trying to get to. That's the ultimate prosperity there is. That's the ultimate prosperous point, I guess. And I don't even know if it's a point. But I guess uh, it could be called an experience. I suppose Nibbana, no explanation applies, right? <clears throat> but ultimately, that's what we're trying to culminate into. That's what we're, what we're focusing on is this cessation of the unsatisfactory dukkha of things that are just unsatisfactory <clears throat> right that's what uh we're, we're aiming for so diligence is definitely something <clears throat> De diligence is definitely something that you need to put in put into your ingredients into the into your mind and let your mind chew on that ingredient quite a lot every day and always ask yourself every day have i been diligent today have i wasted the day have i been diligent with all my activities today right it's not being it's not achieving we're not talking about achieving here right in this case <clears throat> we're talking about being diligent in everything you're doing right so the reflection at night before you go to bed or or when you've got a quiet moment is have i was i diligent today in all my activities and and in the morning when you start off you know you set the tone say okay today these are my activities and you re make the reflection and you make the the determination to be diligent in everything you're doing and make a point always to um, focus somewhere 
in the day as a lay person anyway to practice right to practice right to keep reflecting you know I've, I've spoken about sati before already on a video I, I did a deep dive into that so sati is t we're leading to 24 hours but sitting down and concentrating and developing concentrating uh, developing concentration developing samatha vipassana developing um i guess jhana right which seems to be it might seem out of you know uh out of touch these days because whenever we talk about jhana it seems to be oh, a long forgotten thing but jhana is important in practice now again as a monk um people always ask me um you know do you can you uh, enter jhana can you achieve look monks we can't talk about any of that right we can just talk about it in the sense of there's jhana but whether we can or not that's a subject we can't enter we i had another person uh, ask me a little while ago what are your experiences during meditation are you experiencing psychic things are you experiencing all these other things and i had to say i had to cut the conversation i said you shouldn't be asking a monk these things we can't talk about this what we can talk about is wisdom because out of all the psychic powers and, 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 and out of everything that is needed, wisdom is the ultimate, it's the highest thing there is. It's the highest culmination of practice is wisdom because it's wisdom that frees you, right? It's wisdom that helps you unbind and penetrates all areas of ignorance, right? So we can talk about that. So the experience, whether we have these experiences along the road along the way they, they, it's all good and fine but the, the aim is to is to is to develop wisdom to its full fruition full capability it's only then that we can uh, I guess uh, have that ability to penetrate ignorance or avidya and to destroy or to abandon craving abandon ignorance completely so that's the aim here. It's uh, it's not so much whether you're having the experiences. The experiences are one thing, but it's still not the goal. Right now, diligence is what keeps you pointing on the goal. All right. So I wanted to make that a point today.